Do you want to become more future-proof in today's world? Want to create amazing projects but you don't have a team and millions to spend? And do you want to learn how to embrace new technologies which is one of the most important skills in today's time? Always have been? Well, then let's check out some generative AI and how it can make you superhuman. And we will also show you a quick small demo of a VR project that we completely built by just using AI. First of all, let's have an easy to understand definition for generative AI. Think of generative AI as a type of AI that creates content, just like I do on my job. Oh. Am I replacing myself already? <laughs> Text, speech, images, video, audio, uh, music of course, and 3D worlds, code, everything is possible with generative AI. And just like a human learns by studying others, generative AI takes a data set and uh, builds on top of that. For example, if you ask it to write a poem, it most likely will look into a big set of books and poems and then generate something out of this. And the crazy part is mostly AI is not just taking something and giving it as a reference, so just copying it really, but it's trying to create something new based on the question and based on the data set that you gave it. So this is also super interesting to see how this evolves into the future. This is how the world works right now. AI is impacting all of us and it's really, really crucial to our future. But I will talk on that part also in the later part of the video. Creativity is your limit in how you can use AI. You can start from just text, which means uh, text generation, of course, chatbots, translation, summaries, education, writing, rehearsing, of course, summarizing again and expanding. It's such a big field already. And this is, of course, where ChatGPT comes in, where you can really go crazy and um, also format your text and your data, create tables. It just there is like no real limit at the moment. So this is something where I see one of the biggest use cases, especially in a office kind of digital environment. But you can also use it for image generation. So that means just go to Midjourney, for example, check out all of these crazy, crazy, crazy art creations, let's say. Also here you can uh, create art, you can also manipulate art. So kind of like Photoshop, just um, editing photos, but also filling like gaps, removing people, like. It you can go really, really wild with just image generation as well. And now also, if you can create one image, you can basically create a video because a video is just a lot of images uh, next to each other. So that just means you can also create videos and this is something that we already see. So now you can also get into creating videos. Now combine this one with creating humans as well, creating humans, videos, and then also speech, of course, you can already kind of like create me making a video for you already. And this is also kind of scary to see, but it's interesting to see what kind of uh, possibilities there are. And now for games and um, creating experiences, especially immersive experiences, there's so, so much also coming now and already there. From world building, you can create your whole environment. You can use, you can get crazy with Blender already. Unity just launched a AI tool as well or an AI integration. I think like yesterday or something like this. You can create your own skyboxes. You can of course create NPCs that are also even more like um, feel more like humans with a good dialogue and everything. What hairstyles would you choose if you had hair? If I had hair, I would probably go for a messy bun or ponytail. I like how they look on other people and I think they're easy to maintain. <laughs> Not the ones that you had like 25 years ago in Zelda or something like this, but you also have all of that stuff that is really important. For example, uh, music creation, but also writing code, of course. So all of these things help you a lot in creating games and immersive experiences. And this is something that I want to show you as well. So here we can see a very simple demo that um, shows an experience and everything is built in AI. So all the environment, the textures, the the uh, models and everything. Here we recorded a small video of me jumping around and animating our avatar with this one. As well, we have a little bit cringe sound, a uh, cringe song here with AI generated as well. So the song, the text and everything. And here also the environment. So again, everything just like a small demo to showcase what is possible with uh, this technology here. When getting started, don't feel obligated to test and try out every single AI app there is out there because there's just so, so, so many and 
like every single minute there's a new tool popping out so I feel you I feel you the FOMO every single day when I open LinkedIn and there's like yeah this is the latest greatest 200 new AI tools I mean again at some point you will just spend all your life and all your day in uh, checking out new tools so this is definitely something that you don't want to do unless it's like kind of part of your content plan or whatever you want to do but um, otherwise I think it's just it's getting overwhelming and uh, that is something I feel you because it's just so 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 much on the market right now so then what do you do first of all think about your specific use case think about how you can use AI to help you to solve some chores that you have to do every single day basically one example would be in my case very repetitive type of questions I get asked every single day you won't believe it how many people are like exact the same how do I get started in VR how do I get started with AR do I need a VR headset to learn VR like very similar questions I have asked like hundreds of times already on YouTube but still probably like 30 40 plus messages every single day I can't reply to all of them so if I haven't replied to you're sorry already but um, that is something for example where I use uh, chat GPT we I've built my own kind of like support agent that I fed my company infos like on what kind of deals we have and everything how the structure is and then I trained it on my tone of voice which is really important so basically when I get a standard inquiry that is not like kind of unique at least so if you reach out try to add some personal element to it much more helpful tell me your favorite food whatever it is and um, yeah then I basically if I get like these standard questions I usually just paste it in chat GPT and then it gives me like an answer that kind of feels like me already I always review them so that is like one example how I can barely keep up with uh, responding to some of the comments emails LinkedIn's everything so the framework that I use for using AI tools is thinking about something that I can eliminate enhance or speed up so eliminate like the very very basic questions it's very easy to eliminate these text formatting I don't have to do that anymore if I need to create a table or like sort it or something like this like all of these like very repetitive basic tests like everybody with a 50 IQ can do that is something that I can completely eliminate now I, I can do it completely already enhancing is something of course like our images for example we sometimes create our own um, I mean our own depends on who you ask now but we sometimes create mid journey images for our covers and stuff like this not for the thumbnails but for the covers for ebooks stuff like this this is something where we have some idea already we enhance it and then speed up is the most important ones again like I said the uh, answering the questions but any kind of text that's just too long and too annoying to read legal text law stuff I mean legal law yes sure then text kind of things uh, when I don't get it so helping me understand text much faster much easier is very helpful to speed up my process code completion of course there are a lo lot of things where you can use it to just become like 10 times more productive actually so it's safe to say that mastering or like really knowing how to use chat GPT is going to be extremely valuable because this is like an open sandbox you can just go and ask a question and the quality of the results is depending on the quality of the questions you ask <laughs> just like in real life really so learn to ask good questions and we as developers we have a kind of advantage because we know how to talk to a computer a little bit at least or hopefully a little bit better than other people so we know how to like frame the questions how to give context how to structure the question so we get exactly what we want and not some very generic answer and these tools are extremely powerful if you know how to use them so this is something you will not waste any time when you get into learning how to really use ChatGPT for example again not plug any course don't worry about it I'm not planning on making a fucking prompt engineering course how to do that you will find a million things on that on LinkedIn already just open this freaking tool you find like 25,000 people doing their prompt list and stuff like this so just go on Google and you will find enough of that already as an XR developer something that I can recommend you is I mean as a developer in general is uh, tools like copilot as well I mean there are so many others by the time of recording it's already outdated whatever I say probably but copilot and these kind of code completion tools are extremely helpful but they're like so cool tools like they can help you create your um, skyboxes for your projects your mod 
models and everything so i will link some of them in the description as well you can check them out so that is something that can help you a saving a lot of time by the way we also made a video on copilot already on our second channel i don't know if you knew it but we have a second youtube channel which is completely focused on xr developers and uh, unity slash xr tutorials so you can check it out here as well the copilot video in case you're interested because this again will just make you a three times faster developer which is pretty good i would say so to summarize this chapter look for any way to enhance and improve your workflow whatever that may be i also want to talk about the dangers and concerns i have about ai and generative ai but first of all i would love to thank our sponsor for this video which is kinetics tech i think you might find this pretty interesting kinetics tech has created a way to turn your videos into 3d animations using of course ai and here's the cool part you can also use this animation directly in your games and experiences or create an emotes wheel think of emotes like the next iteration of emojis so way more expressive customizable very fast to access these things of fortnite that you can see like these kind of dances and moves and everything and the technology has a unique retargeting feature which means that these emotes can adapt to any avatar and this is something that can be extremely helpful for you for your game for your project and if this sounds interesting we have actually created a tutorial on our second youtube channel that guides you through the process of integrating kinetics tech into your game and experience it is completely free you can i think even make some money which is pretty awesome so there's like a lot of planning going in that direction as well super easy to use and uh, they have a lot of emotes already if you don't want to record a video so there's a lot of stuff going on and i think it's definitely worth a look if you are into enhancing your project so thanks again kinetics for sponsoring this video really appreciate it amazing to work with you guys and uh, now back to the video try not to get too dependent on these ai tools for your main work so you should always be a master of your craft whatever that might be if it's uh, texting even if it's texting actually also songwriting or uh, making music writing code doing content here creating worlds everything that is don't rely too much on AI because then you kind of lose the touch of uh, having something unique like I think again like try to enhance your work with AI but don't replace it which is also one of the reasons why we at Immersive Insiders or I for my channel right now I still write my scripts myself I do the <laughs> videos so this is me not in not in AI we also do the editing uh, ourselves so Flavio is doing the editing Ashra is writing the code for himself so all of that stuff we use AI for true Moving our work a little bit so that means I put it after the script usually to some AI tools when it's like hey do we have any suggestions or something like this I think for the video editing we can kind of speed up the shorts creation a little bit for the writing the code we can use some um, like fasting tools I mean kind of weird AI already with a code completion a long time ago so this is nothing special and you can also use ChatGPT to help you debugging code for example so it's always like working together but not being completely reliant on on, um, creating everything by AI because then again you kind of lose the human touch and you freaking feel it I see so many LinkedIn posts holy macaroni it's insane so if you're one of these don't freaking do it don't freaking copy paste a chat GPT generated code into LinkedIn because it's so fucking dumb so never forget about refreshing the fundamentals but now comes the most important part of this video the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. The job market is tough right now. Tens of thousands of people are losing their jobs. The global economic situation is falling apart and AI is scaring all of us. AI is already replacing a lot of creative jobs like uh, copywriting, of course, and um, many other text-based uh, jobs really here, which makes everything even scarier. It almost feels like as we have no choice but to use AI for leveling up as a digital creative. But on the other side of despair lies all of our opportunity as well, because these tools can help you find your blind spots and help you to improve and really to become superhuman. We, for example, at Immersive Insiders, we probably get done twice as much from all the things we do here, which is content creation, of course, but also teaching, the projects that we do, the support we have to do, the systems we create, the um, Git repositories, all the Unity projects, of course, and all of that has doubled probably like the amount of stuff that we get done since using AI systems 
systems for supporting us as well. Mostly we use ChatGPT, MidJourney and AI based editing. So that is like the three main things that we use. But um, for being a bootstrap company, which doesn't have like, have like infinite money to just get from investors, it is extremely helpful to us that we kind of are able to navigate all of these coming things with such a small team actually. And as I said, AI is here to stay. It is not going away. It's the new part of our reality. So instead of fighting it and being like, ah, I hate this, I don't like this, try to find a way to embrace it. I mean, again, it's just helpful to you actually. Complaining about AI is kind of like complaining about people using smartphones. It's like, yeah, I mean, of course it's not perfect, but what's the point in complaining about it? And here it's really important to differentiate between complaining and being concerned because these are very very different things and again we should be very cautious of the real dangers that ai has in so many ways the unforeseen consequences and just all of these dependencies that get created and also like just the the, the power in these tools so there is a lot of concern to be there as well and i definitely want to do a dedicated video on that soon as well mark my words ai is far more dangerous so yeah, it's not really an easy topic to talk about, in my opinion at least, to be like super pro AI or super anti AI, it doesn't make sense to be like in one camp or the other. Um, it is extremely helpful, but also extremely concerning. And um, this is something where we just need to find a good balance in how we deploy these tools, how we educate people to be onboarded and how we kind of make sure that people don't get left behind. But again, complaining about bad weather has never helped anybody. So yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts also on using AI. Are you using it? Are you not using it? Do you think it's um, not good, unethical, <laughs> whatever? Or do you think it's amazing? I think it's a kind of like polarizing topic. So it would be super interesting to see what you think about it. The future may be uncertain, definitely in many ways. And skills and um, tools are always changing. The demands are always changing. New jobs can be created a lot of jobs being replaced and deprecated already and if you want to know which are the most important skills that I think are important to learn in this year as a developer then definitely check out this video.